And we're back with another episode, which we finally got her. The girl that laughs behind the camera. Oh, God. The manager, my girlfriend, and baby mama. Don't call me baby mama. Brittany. Ooh. <laughs> That's the laugh. There it is. Um, this one's going to be good, and it's crazy because we're literally filming this at 12 a.m. I day just got off of work, too. The day we're posting it, and that is why, because we are adjusting to our schedules because the last three times we've been filming, she was on her days off, so we it worked out to our advantage, but now that she's back, we got to adjust, and we're still going to continue. We just have to figure out a way, like I always say it. So we're going to get right to it. You know, we're going to talk about, like, first time moving out, leaving quote-unquote bad habits or lifestyles, how, how you get to this position, and how do you keep going as parents, as individuals. So first one, and uh, I already know it, but I, I, the story that we have is, is pretty dope from for what I think, and I think is what like it. So she is two years, right? Two years, yeah. Two years older than me. But when we met, it was uh, briefly... It was just like spontaneously Facebook DM and oh, yeah. went on from there the and, and, and we're here. But when I met her and when she met me, uh, we were both in different lifestyles. Um, just the way things go, right? I think when you meet your significant other, you don't always meet them in the ideal spots or in like the fairy tales go, but different lifestyles point blank so both of us were living at home i was 23 she was 20 25 24 24 going on 25 because we moved out when i turned 24 she was 25 25 yeah yeah just turned 25 oh my god that was like forever yeah. so before that let's rewind it when we're leading up What's the, sorry, what's the difference you think is living on your own now than living with your parents? Kind of relies on me, well, us, technically. Mm -hmm. Before, it's kind of like you discuss it with your family because that's their home. I mean, it's part of your home, but technically it belongs to them. More bills, definitely. Bills, definitely. I mean, we I paid bills and I would help out around the house, but now it's like all on you, you know? Cleanliness. You clean. You need to make sure we're I, clean. I, I don't think a lot of people, you know, wherever you are, maybe you're different, but you worry about like the kitchen, living room, your room. But you gotta help when you have family, like your your mom, your sister, your brother, whoever. But I think when it gets to like your own spot, it's like everything is on you and whoever's living with you. And if you will clean tonight and it's spotless by successful two, feeling yeah honestly. when we finish it is, cleaning it's like ah can it stay like this forever <laughs> and like in a day or two like little things start piling up uh clutter no whatever it is like we have a kid if yeah. you guys haven't noticed already yet or don't follow us noah he's you're cleaning and behind you he's throwing things everywhere on the floor yeah um, so it's like double cleaning so currently. so right right back to that question like was there like a major, you would say, difference that you had to do to get to this point? Like to the day we moved out, like was there like a mental thing that you had to do for yourself? Or like was there a switch that you needed to do? Because going, one, you're in motherhood or getting into motherhood. And two, like now we are, like I say, like we are growing up and we left the hen house. So it's like. It's on us. It's on us. Um, yeah. Well, like for our situation, I mean, we were saving money to buy a house. Unfortunately, it, Noah beat us before we were able to do that. Yeah. So I think for me, mentally preparing myself a lot faster to leave home was hard for me because, I mean, I have a little sister. Um, she was nine at the time, huh? Nine at the no time. Yeah, we're about 16 years apart, so she was like nine at the time. So she was like my baby. So for her... She, I would cry. I think the first week, oh, she told me, 
why are you leaving me? How can you do this? So I like cried and I told her, well, I have to. I'm having my own family, you know? I need to leave. Doesn't mean because I'm leaving, I'm not your sister. I'm not a call away. Um, so that was really, really hard for me, leaving her behind because we were, she was always with me. She was like glued to me. Um, as far as like mentally preparing myself, like leaving them, like it sucked because I was so used to being always with them. Um, but coming home to my own home, like that was a successful feeling. Like, hey, let's go to Home Goods. Like, that's our store now. Yeah, Home Goods. <laughs> home Goods, this Marshalls. This isn't a paid promotion, but Home Goods, Target, and Marshalls. Hit us you, up. You guys, one. <laughs> you guys are one. We can do that. Um, so, yeah, like decorating our own home, getting stuff. I mean, finishing the apartment and everything, you know, like that was so cool to me. Like saying, this is my home. This is my peace and quiet. Because I grew up, I mean, I was an only child up till I was 16. And then I have uh, two stepbrothers. And, oh man, with them at home, like it's fun. But I'm the oldest and they would like to bully me and try to fight me. Think, think they can beat me up. So I miss that. But at the same time, when I come home, I like the peace and quiet now. Um, as far as like... A lifestyle change I think dating when we were dating I was of a I'm single let me have fun and travel the world uh, when I we first met let's go back to like what I said in that first episode my mom said what? tell me who you with and I'll tell you who you are oh god um it plays in factor and we'll get into that one right now but. <laughs> Uh, actually, that first month we started dating, uh, I went to Yosemite and I went to Seattle, uh, not Seattle, you went to Seattle with me, um, San Fran. Yeah. So I was still kind of like, I'm trying to travel, I'm young, I want to see the world type of thing. It, I think like what, what we're going to try to get to and we'll just like skip it, kind of, sorry. Um, when, so for us, it, whoever out there that's listening and you we're are... Not perfect. You know, our scenario was we're having a baby. We we got to get our own space because that's what we deserve and that's what our son deserves. When it comes with that is it comes with a lot of sacrifice. And that's what, like, we, we've had these conversations and I tell whoever I, I conversate with about it, like, there are certain things that you got to give up, which is time to go out, um, time to hang out with, with friends, um, party stuff like that. As, as it was, I wasn't a party guy, honestly. I wasn't very. I like to um, see other places. Hang, hanging out with like, we had John last time at, at with him with Ernie, um, gym all the time, coaching took up all the time. But when it gets into like, all right, now you got to move out, and you're having a kid. That was like a double whammy for both of us. So like mm -hmm. everybody that's like listening, if you're ever gonna, if you have gone through that, you know, like comment your experience. Um, but for those that are getting into it or barely gonna get into it, like you really have to understand. And we've we've made it clear, both of us, like if it doesn't work out, like, you know, this, this isn't for you to get a year lease because one, you'll be miserable. She or her will be miserable. Biggest one is like your your kid will suffer that. Um, but I, what what I'm gonna try to get to is like the people around you. You really see who's around you when you change, like when you make that change into parenthood I don't and even think being like, an a an, an a adult in a sense to like where now your work really needs to happen because now you got bills. Your light needs to stay on. Your water needs to stay on. Food needs to be on the table. You know, and the Saturday, like we said, like right now we're filming this at 12 a.m. because she just got off of work, 2 to 11, and we're still here. Like, it, it's uh, things that we know we need to do, and now that we're creating this type of content and we're here, it's just like, this is a sacrifice we make because now we are losing sleep, quote unquote, but... I think it's things we enjoy though too. Correct. Like, it's oh, a sacrifice yeah. we enjoy, you know. Even though I'm behind the camera, like I find it fun, like watching him film. Um, but I think everything's like a big adjustment, you know. Um, nobody's perfect. We weren't perfect for sure. For sure. So keep going. If, yeah. If a household and a, an empire isn't made in a day or in a year. It's continuous, you know. It, it's just you gotta. 
work as a team and if it's not working as a team figure out a way and if at the end of the day you both know you did everything and it doesn't hey like let's we'll we'll get some older people on this channel that gives us their insight we're working on it they're a little but, uh, shy currently it's uh <laughs> you know and, and i say the statistic i think the statistic is in our generation if you're like in the 20s to 30s something like that in the first five years if you're married it's like that's your divorce rate after five years that's it so it's just like to get to that point we're not married yet but it's just to get to that point it's just like you really have to be sure and you really got to go through everything so the honeymoon stage does end but it does come back as long as like you, you try to keep it alive keep it spontaneous um but my biggest thing honestly and that my for everybody that's gonna go through it and it's not just to like living and stuff or like living on your own but it goes into your friends like the people you got around you Pe people show their true colors when you make a change in your life whether it's like living on your own parenthood um career wise whatever it may be like those people really show their true colors when you're making that change some stick around some don't i think for a girl it's different too because mm -hmm. i mean for you all you those all those guys she shut down bro not the, no, i'm not talking about that i'm just saying like for a girl it's different though like okay for you you can still go to a bar or hang out with your friends and like for me i can't do that while you <laughs> john's gonna be watching this hell yeah <laughs> um no but like you can still do that while i am pregnant you know and for me it's like i can't really do any of that like there's but it's I mean, hard to put I mean, on the spot I, like I'm now. pretty sure you can, but for me, it was like, I don't think I belong there. Or it was like, I'd rather be home. Like, maybe people are smoking, and what about my baby? I was I was super healthy when I was pregnant, huh? But I think, like, also, I don't know what like, happened now, but when, when, I would watch everything, huh? When like, you have, like, your own spot, like, I think everybody thinks, depending on who you are, right? Like, we're obviously, we're in that sense where we don't party like I said, like we don't party, we hang out with our friends when we can and when they can, um, and that that's pretty much it. But I think when everybody gets their own place, the household rules is like how you carry yourself. Like we never made this a party house or a party apartment. Oh, yeah, I know. And I think everybody, a lot of people have that perception, like oh, when you live on your own, nonstop drinking, partying, party, da da da. Heck no. No, no, no. Like for us, that's for us, not for everybody. We like this having isn't for everybody. dinner. Like we'll have a drink or two, but we'll like having people over and have one drink or two, but we're not partying and like, hey, let's have loud music. One, we have a baby and yeah. that definitely will wake him up. Again, it, it's the adjustment that you make that the people around you will either make with you and, you know, take take the time for what it is and stuff like that or we'll cut you off and then the famous quote is, you changed or oh a long time that, that's on you um but next one you know let's um let's push this forward let's, let's go to the next one um a lot of people don't know and if you know her you already know besides our family full-time worker full-time student and full-time mom how does it work how do you do it what goes on through the head a lot of crying <laughs> no kidding um man so when did I, I was still going to school before I was pregnant with Noah and then I took a classes while I was pregnant and then I was working like 16, 18 hours right before I had Noah. Um, Sacrifices. Just because I knew I was going to be off, I wanted to make sure we had enough money so I was working a little extra overtime. Um, and then when I had Noah, I had a class the month after I believe. Um, it's easier because he was sleeping when he was a baby, but then this last semester, since he was a little bit more active, he was what, uh, yeah. six, seven months? He's like seven. Like six, seven months. It's a lot harder because he would recognize that I wasn't spending the time with him. So my mom, thankfully, and my grandma would help me. Um, in the mornings, I would try to do homework, but then he was kind of like, I would notice a little fussy, and then I would get really sentimental by the time I would get to work at two thinking I had spent no time with him. So it was hard. So then I started finding my adjustment schedules that I would come home from work at 11.30ish, 
sleep him, shower, and then start homework from midnight to about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And that, unfortunately, was the best time for me to do my homework because during the day when Noah woke up, I was able to spend some time with him before I went to work. So it was really, really hard. But, I mean, I survived. I passed all my classes. She and, did. She did. Um, but, yeah, it was hard because at the beginning, the first class I took, I was home still with Noah. Yeah. And then the last month and a half, I had to go back to work. So that was definitely really hard. And but it's, again, in, I, I conversate with people about this, like, and I think the, what do you call it, like the stigma or like the... You could say stigma. Uh, when you become a parent is you put on hold, like, your dreams and, and your goals and stuff like that. Me personally, and I've tried to get it through her, and I think now we have it both together, it's when you have a kid, how they say it's your light, but you got to put on whole things, like that contradicts himself to, to in, my, in my eyes, my aspect. So it's just like when you have a kid, that should push you even more to continue. That should push you even more to make your dreams still come true why so you can provide for him and provide an opportunity for them for how many kids you have you have one you got 10 you you provide for them so that that's like what we're doing now like this is something i've i've always wanted to do and you know she's helping me out the guests that we have on here are a blessing to have on here but it's just like we got to continue it because i would say like the grind doesn't stop and your kids shouldn't stop you. They should motivate you to keep going. I think um, that's one of my biggest motivations, to be honest, Noah. Because I cried so many times and I would be like, oh my God. And I said, how am I going to stop here? Like, how am I going to, what do you say? Like, I thought about your words when you say like, how am I going to tell Noah later on in life to fight for his dreams when I never did? Can't so, be a hypocrite. Yeah. So I think that was my biggest motivation. But I also like. For a better schedule well, take it, too. Taking it right back. Like I always, I, I have also told her to not, the people that we want to have around us, and this is kind of like off it, but like the people we want to have around us are the people that show love to what, not just to us, but to him. And why have people around him that are, in my eyes, fake, and we're telling, and we're always preaching like, oh, have real ones around you, but yeah, we want to have, so it's just like, that comes into effect too. Like, we can't be a hypocrite and be like, we only want real ones around us, but we let other people be around him that are not, that are just come, how they say, like, people will come and use you when they need it. Come and go. Come and go. And it's just like, nope, the circle we have is, like, pretty pretty small and tight. Um, you know, our family is big, but outside of our family, we still call them family. It's not that many people. And a handful of people will 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 vouch for that but it's just when you get to that level of uh, friendship with a lot of people is as you connect in different in different aspects in different you know views and it's like bro like this is this is it and you compliment each other simply you you compliment each other's friendship in different ways and luckily for the friends that we both have is it compliments you just want to go get it just put it inside yeah just go get it it's a little uh we're gonna keep this going but I bring you in the camera? yeah our frenchie is crying but that's uh if you haven't followed a uh, lola's frenchies on instagram there you go but uh yeah that's you know you, you don't want to be a hypocrite to your kids when you get to that that position that when you have your kids you don't want to tell them one thing and you do the other Right, because that just contradicts your word and it con contradicts like your validation for sure. And here's Zoe. She's not gonna stay still, so it's briefly. Okay. Say hi, she Zoe. She slapped me in the face. Okay, Zoe. That's our dog. Relax. Lola's Frenchies. She's excited to see. Yeah, me. Lola's Frenchies. This is the first time on camera. First time we have a Frenchie on Say camera. Say hi, Zoe. Okay, sit down. Um, but yeah, like how she was just saying, like the okay, how she did all that, and she's not one to complain. 
she's one to break down like you know how everybody I does emotional. i break down in, di in a different way but what she did not like exclude me i always say exclude me but for her son for our son for her family in this household it's like again it puts us in the position now to be to to be better and do other things and other ventures like we play uh, arm and a leg here and thanks to our uh, real estate you know friends and you would say team now uh, we're in a position to do something different uh, something bigger to upgrade Noah. to upgrade but it it, it doesn't Zoe. it doesn't stop here because we I feel we both feel like this will one day hit different ventures and and we'll be able to do a lot more than just sit here excuse me than just sit here and conversate like we want to take it bigger but it's just a vision we both have like again if you haven't yet and i'm i've never been a big advocate on this and i was held against it um your vision board oh yeah right like your vision honestly the, i think it was a big life change for us this year so i've been wanting to do a vision board for like a few years i think we talked about it last year too huh we never got to it so this year i was on vacation during the beginning of the year so we did it new year's day huh so yeah. new year's day I and we, we and we always talked about it like we're gonna do it now let's do it now let's do it now and we spent months without doing it yeah and, since last year since we moved in and we literally got as we didn't know it but we were get, just getting stuck in the same um like cycle. routine yeah. cycle because it just kept going and going until literally we have a, a store right across from us and we said let's go get it and we went to go get it and we didn't have things to print out the pictures and we waited for that and and then we had everything and that was our new year's day and she she took she took the initiative and she said all right let's print out pictures let's do it one of them was to put this the channel on there uh the name for it we bought equipment we invested but again, it's your investment is your outcome, and we literally did that. I think we've checked a couple of stuff on there. Right away, and we're close to our biggest one, which is, you know, everybody, American dream is to own a home, and that's that's in the in the main one. But again, it takes sacrifice and time. Like, I don't, I think I've told her, but one of like the... For me, it's like one of, one of the hardest things is when I get home late, and since she gets off at eleven, I I have Noah, um, is coming home with him so late, and it's just like one day you will understand what mom and dad are doing. Yeah, I but, think for me when I'm at work and and because sometimes he waits for me. And yeah, he does. He knows it. He he's knows his mom so is at home. Tired so. and he waits for me, and I. And I break down sometimes at work. I get really emotional because I know he's waiting for me at home. But, I mean, I know this sacrifice is going to be worth it. And I mean, he doesn't understand now, but one day he will. And that's the plan of me, like, finishing school and all that for a, how can I say, a better hours. Or not even a better pay or anything, but a better schedule for myself and for Noah and for him. I think... For me, it's it's really hard not being home. Like I always text them, "Did you eat? Did no one eat? Did I left food for them." So I wake up early to make sure there's food for both of them. I I make sure they eat. Like I feel bad leaving them behind, but at the same time, I feel good bringing in my own income to help support both of them. You know, it's not just money for me and Noah. It's for all three of us. You know what I mean? So we're just. What? Would you say like your motivation has just been like the household, Noah, and like the family? Heck yeah. Like I loved being home because I was on vacation for a little bit. I love being home and I and I enjoy them. But I think it's kind of like how you were saying. Uh, my job is not my sense of identity because he said, we were talking about this the other day. Um, he said my job is like my sense of identity. It's not so much that, but it's more of like my personal... Um, Success, I guess you want to say. She's a baby. I know she wants to be spoiled. Um, my personal success that I can provide for my family, that I can contribute to our goals, our trips, our food for ourselves, our bills. Like for me, 
I feel like that's success. Like here, let me give you this, or here, let's do this, or here, I got it. You I think know? when when you get to the to the point um, where it's bigger than you, right? Like you always say, "Oh, I'm proud of myself. Be proud of me." Da da da. Honestly, uh, she just saying and just adding on to it. Like our probably our proudest moments is is being able to provide for each other and for our families. Yeah. Um, you know, it, um, like I, I think I said it in the first episode, like I work with my dad, for my dad, however you look at it. But the success that brings the company that he owns, that he made, and the success and the opportunities that I'm able to provide for, for everybody, it beats everything else. Like, yeah, the satisfaction of yeah. like seeing their faces. Money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah, it's sad, but it... it it provides comfort, and I think everybody deserves comfort because if you don't have the money to pay your light, you're stressing. But when you know you work hard and you get rewarded, you get paid, you have the comfort that your life's going to be paid. As simple as that. And uh, again, it's just the grind can't stop, and you got to keep going because yeah. if you literally stop what you're doing already because the world isn't going your way, your cars ain't going right, you're gonna Don't suffer stop. yeah you're gonna like you're you're yes. you're hearing it it's from a, a dad and a mom time. even though like we're together is just individually like don't stop yeah don't stop no matter how uh, how we say it if you no see how dark the cloud is there's sunshine somewhere there's I think sun, I told you that there's sun, there's sunlight somewhere at the end of the tunnel but again like i said in in my first episode when you learn in the dark, don't forget it in the light. And a lot of people do forget it. But, you know, that's why we're here because you need these affirmations. You need somebody else to tell you what you already know. And, you know, I wanted to do this episode to hear it from a mom, from a dad, um, first-time parents, first-time moving out. Like, when you move out, make sure, even if you don't have your money right, went by the, leading up to it make sure you get it right because bills don't stop coming and COVID-19 is here. I understand there's different laws, whatever. It ends up biting you, biting you in the butt if you try to take shortcuts. So don't stop. Make sure all your bills are paid. And if you have extra, try to save. And if you what still have extra, you know, it's okay to reward yourself. I believe it. You know, um, but make sure everything else is taken care of first because the world does not stop for you. And if you fall behind, it's hard to catch up. And that's, uh, that's tough. Yeah. Like, uh, again, we're 25, 27. Why'd you age me? <laughs> 25, 27. And we feel like our time is running out. Like, we're in a short time, time frame. And in reality, we have a lot of time, but us carrying ourselves like that i think it's just because we want everything at a certain i mean personally for us we have certain goals we want to achieve by a certain age so i feel like we feel that our time is ticking because we want to do it at a certain time or before we have more kids or whatever the situation and, and that is. goes just to like the, the, vision, the vision board, board. Yeah. put a time frame by the end of january i, I think we this. put post-it notes like on the youtube uh, you, so you two was supposed to start on, our first episode in January. Put it, in, put it inside the candle before she she's gonna drop the lights. All right, about this. So we we're, we're supposed to do our first episode of of YouTube in January, and we we're able to knock out three of them. And first episode of February is here. Yeah, and and it's uh. We're getting it done, and that's like the what it did. Like it once it let once it we got started, there was no stopping us for sure. And a lot of people are scared. I was afraid. I'm scared. You know, we got you know the subscribers we have and the views we get. We appreciate y'all and, and we love y'all. I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. And it's just like it doesn't stop there because again, the grind doesn't stop, and you gotta. You, you, you have to keep going. So your affirmation is you got to keep going even though it seems impossible. Oh, yeah. we, we thought at the beginning being living in an apartment, it would be impossible to, to move on. And we have both, not just me, we have both worked our 
We're back. Technical difficulty. <laughs> and we got to put Zoe back. The one thing about, really quick, about starting a new venture is you got to figure everything out by doing research. And that's what we've done. YouTube. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, our biggest thing was when living in an apartment, trying to get out. Again, I'm, I'm going to clarify, we we don't live in a bad area. We don't live in a bad apartment, whatever. Like, we live in a good commute from work. We, we are very fortunate and blessed to be in this position to be able to provide this for both or both of us like i don't just do it she does it um and we both provide for it um but the biggest thing is you can't settle because if we wanted to settle we would still be here for the next couple of years because it's a nice place there's always better and you just gotta go get it yeah and i think again from being first-time parents this was new to us. Like, this was completely, I mean, out of the ordinary of our own lifestyles because we could have stayed at home. We could have cried and moaned about everything. And we wouldn't be in this position, to be honest. We wouldn't be here, here in front of the camera, to be honest. That's true. I think it's a big, I mean, I, like anything in life, I think it's a big adjustment. It's just the way you respond to it, to be honest. It's the way you you want to keep going, you know. What are you going to do at the end, you know? And, I mean, nothing's easy. Of course not. I think... Everything that's... How they say everything is worth Everything that's worth it doesn't come easy. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and then for us, we moved right before Christmas last year. So it was like expense Too after easy. expense after expense. We moved for our birthdays. I didn't think we even did anything for our birthdays. Which... We didn't care. Moving was like the best for us. Um, but we had to spend on, we had nothing. So we had to spend on everything. Um, we just brought you the, a bed. The savings that we had, Went we, to here. <laughs> we, we used it and we didn't go through it because we still left like a little cushion for it. It wasn't a lot. But again, it could have been moving out, not saving. And we ended up doing it. Oh. Baby calls. Please hold. But, um, but with yeah, like with with all that, it, again, it goes in, into what you want to do. This is our life. This is our like. This is we're not gonna cut this out. Like this is our life. This is how things go. There's no shortcuts around it. There's no. There's ugly size and there's good size and there's pretty size and that's just the way it is because a lot of people I think on social media in general try to cut those parts out and not show it and then play a different part. Hey, the way we are here is the way they get it in person, on camera, on night and everything. I mean, so everybody shows what they want to show, obviously, and everybody is right to their privacy, which I agree. I am yeah. not a very public person, so I like to keep my privacy privacy as well. But I mean, um, we try to be as genuine as possible so people can know from our personal experiences, you know, um, what we go through and what our family and friends have gone through. Um, exactly. Because for personally, my mom went through exactly what I did, you know. My mom had me at a young age. Uh, I think my mom went to school. I can't remember. I want to say I was like 10. She did her bachelor's and then she did her master's when she got pregnant with my little sister. So I would help out with that. So I think that was another motivation for me too. You know, my mom did it. I can do it, you know? And same thing like with my dad. Like my dad always said like when they were going to have my oldest sister, um, they brought, he brought my mom back from away from the whole family so he can start over here in, in Baldwin Park, LA, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it was just like, I'm gonna figure it out for me, and and like I always told you, it's just, yeah. I don't, I want to do it for us, and I don't want to end up blaming anybody else for what we didn't do and what we couldn't do and why it didn't happen. Yeah. And I'm I'm glad we. You want to have your own uh trial and error type of situation. Exactly. We you we we are our own story at the end of the day, like it's not perfect. It's not in a straight line, but again, it's just what you want out of life. We'll I mean, 
I, I, we were blessed that we had options of where to go with like family, like helping us so we wouldn't pay so much in rent. But at the end of the day, it's we wanted our own space and I don't regret it. I mean, we had a roommate, Nietzsche's. Hopefully, you know, we're in, <laughs> hope they're, they're here this weekend, so maybe so we maybe, get an episode maybe with, get with an her episode with my cousin. Um, but that was another thing, and we'll, when she's on here, we'll talk about that, about coming from a different city to, you know, LA. Um, but again, is this people help you in different ways? Yeah. People come into your life for different reasons, and they leave your life for different reasons. You know, um, this is the first episode I'm doing after, you know, if you follow me on IG, after, you know, what my, me and my family have gone through. But in the words of my grandpa, siempre para adelante, nunca para atrás, always forward, never backwards, and that's where we're going. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's hard, yeah. And like how we've been saying the whole this whole episode, you just gotta find your reason why you keep going. And yeah. our our little man, our household is why we ourselves keep going every day, no matter what the situation is. Like tomorrow, we gotta be up early, and we're here for it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you just you just. I think when you find something you enjoy, you don't really drag to do it but even like if it so again like job wise like if you don't enjoy it you just gotta do it meanwhile you find oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. obviously i i went i went through that yeah. uh before where i work first uh right now i was going through it i was so over it and i wanted something and luckily i've been i work in a hospital i've been there five years i mean you're gonna have your good and bad days in any job you know sometimes i'm like i don't want to be here but there's days where I'm like, I love being here. Like, I love the, I'm, I work in a surgery room, so it's a fast paced thing and I enjoy that. Like, I'd rather have something super fast paced, keeps me entertained and makes my time go fast than just sitting around, you know? And my job prior to that, I kind of was just sitting around, so I felt useless. I am more of a, let's do it now and let's get things done, you know? But it's just like you, I've always told you too, like, you're just friendly. Oh, that's Like, too. the way you, when you, talk to people or meet people like your attitude is just so to me i say it's annoying but it's just in a friendly way and i think a lot of, that's why a lot of people in work and all the a lot of places their attitude towards i guess you would say their customer service or many people is just like ugly it's like what did that person do to you yeah you know what i mean like I again think- your your energy feeds off so if you give a bad energy <laughs> you're gonna get a shit and she knows like that's how I am. If you're bad energy already, I won't fuck with you. <laughs> then how Kevin Gates said, "Let the clown have the circus." At that point, and and that, and that's the way it goes. At- yeah, for sure. And then for me, like I, I am the type of person that I'm gonna go above and beyond for you. You know, uh, work wise, friend wise, family wise. I will try to do everything I can until I get like, a, oh no, you can't do it. You that's know. That's why we don't agree in certain we're very things. different <laughs> so but so, i mean i well, think we complement each other so i think this could be our ending topic um about what is enough for you to cut somebody off oh let's talk about she that doesn't one. she doesn't she doesn't, ha- she doesn't have from our experience again everybody everybody's different everybody see like i'm the She's the type of person that will see the good out of everybody until the very, very end. Oh, you can't fuck me over so many times and I'll still be there. <laughs> I'm the type of dude that, you know what? If you do it once, twice, that is it. Cut you off. You're never here. You're never around again. And and again, I, I even said it. I was talking to, when we were talking to John last time and I talked to him off camera. I tell him, it's just, I, know this, I know the consequence that comes before I even make it. So if... I cut me cutting you off leads to me not talking to you later. Kick rocks. I know it already. I don't think about the uh, not so much of that. I don't think about the consequences. The his, always, but I feel like, guilty. There's uh nope. No. Nah. Kick rocks. Okay. We had this conversation yeah. with Angie, I, which is my aunt. Hopefully, maybe we can get her and my uncle it, onto the camera. But it's the same thing we were having in New Year's. But it's just like how we just said earlier, like when. The example of moving out, when people don't show you love or come da 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 whatever it is, all right, now you're out of the picture because now you think I, I'm not any use to you. 
And I've been saying it, like, tell, tell me who you have around you. Perfect. I'm going to have people around that don't want me for what I have, but just what I can provide. But like, at the same time, oh, it was the same thing I was telling you earlier. For a guy, I think it's very different than a girl. I know I'm not trying to use, like, this uh, girl versus guy type of thing. But at the same time, I, I do feel it's different. Because for me, I have Noah with me most of the time. Like, I feel guilty leaving him. Like, I go oh, when the pedicure places are open. The nail place, I'm constantly texting my mom. Like, what is he doing? Is he okay? Okay, they're almost done. Like, I'm constantly texting her. Cut people off. But not just that. But it's like, um, I think it's different in the sense of that. Because you can still, it's the same thing. You can still do stuff and things like that. And I feel a little bit more guilty of, like, leaving Noah. Maybe it's I'm attached to him. That possibly too. <laughs> but I just think in a sense, that's a little different in a girl. I'm more of the sensitive one in the relationship. So I, I think, and I, I think it's my personality as well. <laughs> Stop. But I think it's a personality as well. And that's how I grew up with my aunts and my grandma. It's like, you're going to do above and beyond, even though they don't care. At least. You know you did the good thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 to this extent, I still feel that way. Work-wise, friend-wise, uh, family-wise, I still feel that way. Cut that. Oh. I I, just, again, so 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 we're not controversial and you guys will see like we've had this conversation and, and to not split sides, you know, whatever. Um, is this she's like that, she's happy with it. I'm like this, but I'm very happy with it also. And I that's think just, at the end of the day, just, we end up complimenting that, each other. That's though. just, yeah, exactly. But that's just how we go and exclude the, about, like, being parents together. Each other, like, for everybody watching, you guys may not have somebody. You may have, you guys are different. You guys are the same, whatever it may be. But it's just when you make that decision to either keep doing things for people that don't show you that same love back. Or is it your decision to cut people off? Be okay with the consequence. No matter what. Whether it's good or bad, just be okay with it. If you can live with it, go ahead. Power to you. But if you can't, then maybe the, the action you're about to make, the decision you're about to make, isn't the one you should make. Again, it, it goes back into maybe, what if I did this? Or what if I didn't do this? Right? Like I've always told you, like, don't live in the what ifs or what could have been. Is this, hey, this is what I happened. This person. is what it is. That's what it is, like. But she, there's there's a lot more to say, but there's so much. We're gonna keep it there because it's time to go, Mimi's. Just kidding. Uh, we're just keep it there because there's a lot more to say, but that's why more episodes are yet to come. She'll be back here. Hopefully, the next episode we get more guests, and either the older head or we get the roommates back so we get their view. But before we end, you already know. I take my daily shot of water. I finish mine, so I'll finish this. Mom of water. <laughs> we'll take a shot of water. Um, but it's also life again, and I think this one makes it even more special because you just got to be grateful. You got to be grateful for every time you wake up, for every time you go to sleep. So and everything you have as well. And everything you have and who you have around you. That's true. So Cheers. it's also life. I mean, toast to life. Whatever, whatever you like, have. If you got water. Coffee, drinks, alcohol, whatever. Just take a toast because we all deserve it. Here you go. Ooh. Ooh, your drink is so strong, sir. Ooh. Like, comment, share, subscribe because these episodes are coming in hot. <laughs> High five. Ooh. Peace. <laughs> that shit is so strong.